Today on our special edition of Halloween's This Week in Video Games, we have the top five bloodiest games of all time. Plus, we've got another Yo Adrian segment and all the latest video game news. out there and welcome to another episode of This Week in Video Games. I'm Andrea Renee, here with my co-host Jessica Villarreal in fabulous costume, I must add. Hello, yatta! <laughs> Hopefully everyone out there recognizes who she is, yes. and in case you don't, she'll tell you. I am Chun-Li from Street Fighter. Fantastic. Yes. I do <laughs> love that blue, it's awesome. Oh, thanks, thanks. I, uh, Did I'm you custom make this costume? Uh, a friend of mine's mother made it for me. Uh, I went down to uh, Santa Alley, which is downtown Los Angeles, mm -hmm. and uh, bought this color material, and she whipped it together. She had all this gold trim for me and made me this most amazing piece That is ever. a good friend yeah, right there. I know. She was amazing. And so... It's an awesome costume. It's it's hard to get into, though. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, this one wasn't exactly easy anyway. Yeah. <laughs> and another costume that probably isn't easy to get into is the custom-made costume that Adrian is wearing. Hi, guys. The I salt snake. <laughs> <laughs> you got the accent, too. I love it. You look nice and stealthy back there. You can barely see you, which is just just what Solid Snake does. It's what I do. It's my job. <laughs> Can you Snake please her? keep the voice up for the whole show? I'll try. I'll try my best. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh. Later on in the show, we are going to uh, show a clip from Adrian's homemade video, Dinner with Snakes. It's going to be fantastic. I'm very excited for that. Um, but first up, as you probably noticed, we have these cool little turntables on our little desk here and because we are going to do DJ Hero in the showdown. Nice. Yes. I've never played this. Adrian was giving Sorry. me a crash course yes. I got the in crash how to play. Well. Just, it's all set up for you, you just have to press uh, A. So um, this DJ Hero 2 just came out this week, so we thought what better than to try it out and it's got a little turntable. <laughs> all right, so we'll go to restart, I guess. Uh, oh, wait, back. Zone? No, back. No. Uh, no. Green no, maybe? I'm not sure. Okay. Resume. There we go. Resume, yeah. There we go. Right, oh. Ready? Okay. Oh, am I on the left? Am I, I player one? You're player one, Indra. Okay, oh, I'm, I'm on the one. left. You're on yes. the right. Okay. Whoa. Turn up the jam, yo. <laughs> Got it. Uh -huh. Ah! Do you have to hold the button down? You have to hold the button down. Yeah. Oh, you hold the button down. And when do you move the thing on the left? With where the arrow hits? Yes. When the when there, you move the thing on the left only when the path changes. Right now it's not going to change. Right now it's all in the same line. When do you twist the? When you see the little white arrow, you see those little white marks. What does this mean? Is it freestyle? Yes. You can, you can, there's where you can move it left and right. If you want. See that? Oh! There you go. Got it. I don't know what I'm doing. I like how they put it on easy. What? Now, I'm a huge fan of Guitar Hero and Rock Band, but this is one music and rhythm game that I've never tried before. This is the first time I'm trying it, too. It was, it's, it was mainly because I was like, I don't have room in my apartment between all of my guitars and drums and everything for another peripheral. But it actually isn't that big. I could probably find a spot to hide it away. Wait, so you hold the buttons down. I'm still trying to figure out how to play this. Andrea's got it. I'm just watching Andrea now. Freestyle. This is the song they have in the commercial for it, isn't it? I believe so. Uh, I so. What's that orange line mean again? 
I don't know. What does the orange line mean? It's when you start racking up a combo. See, Andrea, your line is up blue, 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 and then it just dead times two because you're hitting all the buttons. Nice! You're doing great. <laughs> Jessica. Not so much. You don't have to tell me, Adrian. Sorry. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, my ring finger is hurting. Oh, there you go. You have to hold it down. Not all the buttons. Not all the buttons. Oh, come on now. <laughs> this is interesting. This is an interesting game. Oh, whoops. Wiki, 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 wow. I was looking wiki, wiki, at the wiki, chat room. No stars. Oh, bummer. Jun Lee defeated. <laughs> Player one wins. Yes! <laughs> and because we're doing our special costume Halloween, I will exempt you from wearing oh, the hat of shame. Well, thank you. I appreciate it very much. I don't think I'd be able to fit it over my bonbons. No, right and I would here, not so. want you to because your costume looks fantastic. <laughs> I'm going to actually put this over here. If you want to hand me yours, I'll get it oh. off there for you. Okay, okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. So now moving on to our new first before we get to the news you have this awesome cool segment but before mm -hmm. we get to your awesome cool segment i want to make sure i remember to say a big thank you to storm on demand if you can watch jessica and i and adrian every week on this week in video games it's because of storm on demand they provide us with all of our cloud computing if you need cloud computing services visit stormondemand.com all right, so you got some cool indie Halloween games. Yes, basically, I figured it's Halloween. Everyone loves spooky stuff. So I just kind of surfed online and looked for a bunch of different Flash games that you could play if you're just sitting in front of your couch on your laptop. And um, basically, the first game that I found, a friend actually recommended to me um, a few years ago. It's called The Outbreak. And it's actually survivetheoutbreak.com. And it's pretty much a choose-your-own-adventure type of game. It's a uh, real live action footage with these actors with, uh, you know, acting skills that aren't exactly up to par, but they do a good job for what it is. Nice. And um, yeah, um, it'll show you here, like, um, do you decide to kill this guy or do you let him go free or, you know, things like that. And really, there's only one right answer. So I remember playing this game through 20 times, 25 times before I actually started picking like the right answers, because if we don't, um, you'll just die but it'll show you it'll show you the path that you go down and and the the, the wrong decision and things like that so that's really cool and uh, I, I highly suggest that you check that one out survive the outbreak.com and then um, there's also a website called newgrounds.com and this was actually recommended by g4 TV on their way on their website g4tv.com uh, there's a game called ex mortis and it's sequels. They have links to the sequels on there as well. And that's kind of like the uh, point and click type of game. But it's a very um, eerie, you wake up in the woods, you don't know where you are, and the only place that you can go to is inside this house. And you walk inside of this house, and it's just, it's already scary. It's dark, it's corroded, it's bloody. You see like flashes of ghosts and things like that that are pretty creepy for a flash game because some some flash games are pretty corny but this one was actually pretty good also on Newgrounds, you can check out road of the dead which is basically uh mowing down zombies in a car which i think is pretty nice. cool and then the last um site that i uh recommend is 666gamer.com it's actually they say the number one site for point and click scary games uh horror games gory games shooting games funny violence 
you know, you want it, they got it. That's 666gamer.com. So if you try any of those out, you know, let us know. We'd love to hear about it. Yeah, so. email us. You can email Jess at Jessica at thisweekend.com. You mm -hmm. can email myself at Andrea at this weekend, Or you can email both of us at videogames at thisweekend.com. Yeah. Those look pretty cool. I'm going to have to go home and try some of those out. Yeah, I like them a lot. These kind <laughs> so. of like mini games I think I could handle. It's like the big survival horror games oh, like Resident okay. Evil that I get too freaked out to play. Oh, those are my favorite. No, I know. they're I'm, not. You know I'm me. I'm so immune. Gamers. I'm immune. I'm so desensitized and do all those video games and rock and roll music or something. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't say no, that. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> what about you, Adrian? Do you like horror survival games? I mean, the only one that I've played is Resident Evil. So, and I'm that's kind of... a snake voice. I'm disappointed. You gave Whoa. it up already. <laughs> well, you asked Adrian, didn't ask Snake. <gasps> oh, okay, exactly. okay. Good to know, so, good to know. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's cool. So, moving on to the news, since we've got so much to get through today and mm -hmm. we don't want to run over like we did last week. Oh, Whoopsies. my goodness. Our top story of the week, PlayStation 2 turns 10 years old mm -hmm. this week. Happy birthday. So we celebrated the launch of the NES last week, mm -hmm. and this week we are celebrating the PlayStation 2. It is the 10-year anniversary. It launched on this very, or not this very day, on Tuesday. It launched back in 2000 and went on to become one of the most successful video game consoles of all time. Isn't it crazy to think that, that was 10 years ago? 10 years ago, and what was so impressive about it at the time was it played DVDs! Oh my gosh, who's ever heard of that? And now it's kind of like, oh, okay, that's cool. You know, it plays DVDs. But at the time, oh, I do we remember were just it being floored. huge. I yeah. had mine double. I actually still have the PlayStation 2 that I got in 2001 when I went nice. to college. I still had that exact same PlayStation at my house. Wow, yes. nice. Mine was a hand-me-down, and that's actually um, where I played um, Final Fantasy VII on it. So I didn't get to play Final Fantasy VII on the uh, PlayStation 1, but the PlayStation 2, since it was backwards compatible, which we appreciate, I was able to do that. Um, now you can only you can get it for only $100, and it's crazy that they're still actually producing games for the PS2. It is kind of interesting <laughs> so. that they're still doing it, and actually they are going to be doing a bundle where you can get the PlayStation 2 with a copy of the new Toy Story 3 game oh, wow. starting on Sunday on Halloween, October 31st. Happy Halloween. So, but it was interesting though is that even though they're still selling it, the NPD, the group that cro uh, tracks mm. hardware sales, was mm -hmm. like, uh, there's not really enough sales for us to bother tracking it anymore. Right, so, right. Even though it, it is here, PlayStation has bigger and better things on their horizon, including the upcoming PS. P2. What? Now this, I want to show you guys, <laughs> is not a real photo of the PSP2. <laughs> this is a Kotaku site. Um, uh, this is a mock-up from a fan. This is a drawing. This is kind of like a, what we would like to see if mm -hmm. there was going to be, you know, a new PlayStation 2 or PSP2, which there is going to be. Um, around the time of the Tokyo Game Show is when, um, you know, Sony really had these meetings about the PSP2. That's going to be coming out. In the mock-up here, you can see there's a dual um, dual sticks, which mm -hmm. I know a lot of gamers, including Adrian, really wanted. So hopefully the screen itself will be sharper than the current PSP. is about an inch larger. And the larger screen means that, of course, the PSP2 will be larger as well. And ap apparently Sony is touting the screen as HD. So really what this comes down to is that it's bigger, it's better, it can have better graphics, but you know... Mainly it has a second analog stick. I yeah. mean, I think a lot of uh, people who already own a PSP have not bought the PSP 2000 or the 3000 or the, or the Go because they still haven't put the second analog stick. That's what everyone's been asking for. And now they finally looks like they're going to give it. I'm sure it'll sell well. Do you think that is, so you think that's what the problem is with, with the sales wise? You don't think it's maybe because, you know, there's, there's not exactly a, a plethora of amazing games to play on there? I mean, well, there granted, are. But yeah. they just don't market them right, like Resistance and all the, the entire Metal Gear series Even and Local Local and God of War. And God of War, War. And God of War. comes out next month. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just yeah. Sony's been terrible at marketing. I think that's their biggest problem. Sony doesn't know yeah. how to market their system. Interesting. Wasn't there a Soul Calibur? The Soul Calibur? And Soul Calibur as well. Beautiful on games. The PSP. Yeah. Everything looks beautiful on the PSP. Like, that's not the problem. I don't think that's the problem with the PSP. It's, it's yeah, it's we need some better software before I'm going to go out and buy it. And so Absolutely. And I do want to make a 
mentioned, some people in the chat room were saying that this photo came out a while ago. And yes, that's <laughs> true. This photo is not recent. Mm -hmm. um, but the news about the details about the PSP2 was just leaked this week. So I just mm -hmm. want to clarify that, yes, I know that this is old photo, <laughs> but the news itself is new because obviously Sony hasn't released any, any photos or media that's been officially, you know, sponsored or whatever by Sony. Right. What I think the really big problem is, and something that Nintendo also is trying to address, is when you're starting to get into these handheld devices, now everyone wants every device to be a multimedia, multi-function mm -hmm. device. So, which brings me to my next point, that there's also rumors about the PlayStation phone. Now, we've been hearing about this for quite some time. Now, I know the image, mm -hmm. the, the image here is quite small on, on the website, on this GameSpot um, uh, story, but I thought this was really interesting. Now, back in August is when Gadget first reported that Sony Ericsson was working on a new gaming-focused mobile phone resembling the PSP Go. And it, this week, it, there was some more news that came out on some of the blogs about these photos. Now, I don't know if they're mock-ups or prototypes, but mm -hmm. it makes sense that, you know, Sony, if they're going to produce another PSP, that they would make it into a, a phone. Why not make it, uh, you know, kind of diversify? Because Nintendo is really going to grab the handheld market mm -hmm. with the 3DS. So they really need to compete. And I think the easiest way for them to compete is say, not only can you get HD gaming, but you can also make phone calls. Right, yeah. It's true. Like, I think that is the, the new wave is, you know, the multi-functioning telephone. But at the same time, they better have like really strong battery life with these phones because if they are touting it as a mobile gaming telephone, it's like my my LG Ally uh, that operated on the Droid died within the day if if I was on it for too long. I mean, I, I understand you know what is too long exactly, but I would say like a few hours even, and you know right. just reading through my apps. The same thing with the iPhone. I heard people you know kind of complain about the battery life on that. So I, I they really need to kind of concentrate on making something last longer if they really want people to actually play games on it. I think. Right. Well, according to the rumor, it's going to likely run on the Android 3.0 operating system. Mm. With it'll run games specifically designed for Android. Hardware-wise, it, it will have a one gigahertz Qualcomm uh, CPU, 512 megabytes of RAM, one gigabyte of ROM, a 3.7 to 4.1 inch D-pad, shoulder buttons, a touchpad, and what appears to be two sensors. Now, this is on the PSP wow. phone, so it has some it has some oomph behind it. I mean, obviously, Android is kind of you know creeping its way into the market mm -hmm. and really kind of going after that that mobile game that you know that Apple has so successfully tapped into right so I really hope that Android can come up with some really great hardcore games you know and we've seen some really amazing games on, on mobile platforms so far mm -hmm. so completely totally. I think that it's only going to get better I agree thoughts snake well uh, <laughs> I was actually recently talking to the Sony marketing PR guy his name is Peter Peter dial and what he said is that uh, they say that the PSP is a Wi-Fi device, and people are used to having all, and always connected devices like mobile phones or iPads. So he thinks that right now all the games are kind of like not satisfying the hardcore gamers. And then when asked, well, you do have a relationship with, with Google, and Google's with the Android, so can we expect a partnership with that? And the only thing he said was, we have relationships with Google. <laughs> very mysterious, but I think he got the point across that we can expect great things. Oh, wow, that's really exciting. That's some little insider info there, um, even though it's kind of cryptic. Andy951 in the chat actually says you would need a big SD card, too. That's true. Like, where are you going to store your games? Like, how much, you know, how much... Uh, Cloud computing. <laughs> yes, let's make it all cloud computing. No more SD cards. Yeah. <laughs> Stormondemand.com. Nice. Check it out. <laughs> you don't know what cloud computing is. Nice. <laughs> so, anyway, we're going to move on to our next story. Wow, Cataclysm. That's World of Warcraft for all of you non-PC gamers out there. It's going to be sold digitally at its launch and offer preloading. This is some footage from the um, World of Warcraft Cataclysm trailer. If uh, you WoW gamers have probably watched this over and over and over again. Um, now, this goes. This is good for the people that maybe hate the retail experience, hate going into the store and dealing with people, you know, like most PC gamers. <laughs> if you want to feed on the antisocial stereotype of yourself. Um, here's what happens. Basically, if you want to get World of Warcraft at the very first possible moment, then um, Blizzard is going to be offering this 
via digital download starting December 7th, the same day it hits retail through Battle.net. Now this is um, the first for the World of Warcraft franchise, they've never offered a digital download before, but it's similar to you know, what StarCraft fans are already experiencing with Wings of Liberty. And in addition to those that pre-order the game, um, you will have it preloaded as well, which will give them access to the expansion as soon as the servers are turned on come December 7th. So very exciting for World of Warcraft people. You can mm -hmm. download it right from your house, right when it's available, and you don't have to worry about waiting to go to the store to buy it. <laughs> so are you a World of Warcraft player? I'm not. I was always a Diablo girl myself, mm -hmm. which, oh, BlizzCon just last weekend. Yes. Some, some interesting news. Uh, they introduced a new class of character as well. Um, and they announced that they'll be giving out some beta codes for Diablo 3. Only 1,000, though. And it's wow. just like, who do I have to slaughter to get me one of them beta codes? Because Diablo is my poison. But we should so, make some phone calls, I think. Yeah, we should. Yeah, we try to get, uh, get Our ourselves people a people kind of dare people. Here so. at uh, This Week in Video <laughs> Games. That'd be nice. All right, very cool. So up next in the news, Telltale's Back to the Future game gets a release this month, pre-order incentives, and a console version. Now, I have some screenshots since they don't have a trailer out for this yet. Um, where are those screenshots? Hold on. I have them. Um, what's really cool about this is this year marks the 25th anniversary for the Back to the Future movie series, which mm -hmm. I love, Back to the Future. And the 25th was actually the day that he goes, was it back in time too, October 25th? In the movie, I think, or maybe it was in the future, I think. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, when he goes to 2015 or 2025 or something the, like that, someone, I'm sure someone new. in chat could tell us, but it was something yes, like that. Yes, someone in the chat room help, help us out. Um, so you can play a young Doc Brown or Marty McFly, and what's cool about this is if you, um, you're going to get, in addition to the game, you're going to get some behind the scenes video, and also customers who pay the prepaid $25 fee for the Back to the Future on the Telltale official gaming site. You'll be able to download a free copy of the recently released Puzzle Agent, and you will be permitted access to an exclusive developer discussion forum on the Telltale site. Wow. And this is the best part. Telltale Games is going to donate $1 from every pre-order to go to the Michael J. Fox Foundation for research for Parkinson's, wow. which I think is really fantastic that they're doing that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So they are also going to release this for the iPad and the PS3, so you'll be able to get it on PlayStation only. But uh, there's no details about those, well, how much they're going to cost or when they're going to be released. These versions that I was talking about are for the PC and for the Mac. I know I didn't clarify. Mm. So the Back to the Future game should be pretty fun, you know, awesome. Yeah. yeah. I don't even know if I remember ever playing uh, a Back to the Future game. Was there one back in the 80s? I'm pretty maybe? sure this is the first one. Oh, that'd be, that's incredible. I would Adrian, love to check it out. Do you know of a previous Back to the Future game? do you know? Uh, <laughs> actually, I'm, yeah, th that goes too far back. I mean, I was born in 1987, so... Uh, what? Oh, my God. Really? Good well, Lord, I'm Adrian so old. So <laughs> no, no, we're young, we're young and fabulous. Age is just a number, but uh, <laughs> not over here. It's... <laughs> Um, thank you, Dead Pixel. October 25th was when Marty McFly went back into the future. And apparently there was a bad NES game. Oh, okay. I thought there, well, I guess there were kind of, you know, some NES games for a lot of movies, i.e. E.T. and Kroll and, you know, all that stuff. But, um, or not NES, but video games. And so I assumed there was one for Back to the Future, but hopefully this one will be better. Before I get to the next news story, I just want to mention that we have a Mario pumpkin. Does and he looks notice? fantastic. Oh my that it's gosh. a Mario. It's, I know it's hard to see because it's light in here, but it's Mario. <laughs> I carved it myself. Yay. That's great. That looks, did, did you have stencils for that? I did. I'm not going to try to pretend like I did that freehand. <laughs> no way. I definitely downloaded a stencil from the internet. So oh, they I've, had, some, I've done they one They have some pretty cool. They had a couple of Halo ones that were really ambitious. That mm. I was like, oh, Halo, that'd be awesome. And then I was like, no. I don't have two hours to carve a pumpkin. There's some crazy ones online, like uh, top 25 Pokemon that oh, are carved really? out of pumpkins. Uh, there's a, um, gosh, there's just so many that you can just look up online. There's one that's just a face that's that's carved out like a human face that's like screaming out of a pumpkin. It's wild. You really need to get like special tools for that at yeah, that point. Some carving tools. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Indeed. <laughs> indeed. All right. Speaking of Halloween and scary things. 
Red Dead Redemption Undead Nightmare DLC Woo. is going to hit retail on November 23rd. Clearly, it's out this week on download. You can play it if you get it from, um, you know, those downloadable places, Xbox Live and the PSN. Take Two Interactive to announce that the Undead Nightmare, the fourth and final announced DLC for Red Dead Redemption, is going to be available on a disc version. The package will include all four of the previously released downloadable content packs, the Undead Nightmare, Outlaws to the End, Legends and Killers, and Liars and Cheats. The retail collection will also include all previously released multiplayer free roam modes and will sell for the price of thirty dollars. Wow. That's of course, great. as I know it's a pretty good price. As the name implies, the Undead Nightmare Pack will introduce zombies to the world of Red Dead Redemption and with an entirely new uh, single player adventure, which I think is cool because a lot of DLCs don't give you a whole other like campaign mode. Mm -hmm. So obviously he's the protagonist John Marston is uh, charged with finding a cure for this zombie plague that's sweeping the Western world. And I think it's kind of neat that you could even get, you know, zombie animals in this. A zombie bear? I heard they had a zombie mm -hmm. bear, <laughs> which is cool. So, yeah, because you never see zombie animals, really. They kind of just get eaten and just, that's it. Exactly. So that'd be nice to see a And you get animal. eight new zombie characters for use in the multiplayer, which I think is really awesome. Wow. So I you can all just, be zombies. I just started playing this game. All I've done is ride around on some horses and shoot some rabbits, but uh, sooner or later I'll get into this. And when I do, I'm definitely going to have to download... Uh, you know, the nightmare pack, or the zombie stuff, because I just love zombie stuff. So I dream about them. That's how much I love them. All right. <laughs> so. so what is this next story all about? Uh, basically, um, Reggie fils from Nintendo says that he sees Apple as a larger threat than Microsoft and Sony. Um, he spoke with Forbes magazine recently, and um, he says... Do I think that in the near term, Apple can actually hurt us more than Microsoft? Absolutely. Um, and they say despite crazy sales with the iPhone and the iPod Touch, Visa May says that content will actually, you know, win the audience. Um, bringing up Dragon Quest as an example of a game that you know can consume people. Um, but he and he even pointed out that 14 of the top 20 selling games this generation was um, originated by Nintendo, and it's true. Every time you see like a top five list, there's always some sort of Nintendo game in there. Um, but you know, the story says that he didn't point out Apple's bigger uh, trump card, which is you know Nintendo isn't a telephone, and so I feel like Apple really is you know, some of Nintendo's biggest competition because Nintendo is so great at bringing in casual gamers and simplifying things and Nintendo really does pertain to that crowd and Apple with their iPhone and their casual gaming and something as simple as Angry Birds is, is in direct competition with that because you can just download it off your phone, play it and go and you're ready to go, and so. This is really interesting that this story came out, especially since Apple just posted like record, I mean not Apple, excuse me, Nintendo just put out a story saying that they had uh, really steep revenue declines mm. over the last six months compared to the previous year, but I don't think that they need to be worried about anyone. I think Nintendo created the genre of casual yeah, games. I, agree. I mean, look what they did with the Wii. They really brought casual games to the masses, and I think mm -hmm. the iPhone really rode on the, the Nintendo's coattails mm -hmm. into that genre. And I really am kind of disappointed that Nintendo thinks that Apple would be a threat. When you talk mm -hmm. about gamers, I mean, every gamer you know knows Nintendo, has right. had a Nintendo, mm -hmm. or still owns a Nintendo, or has played a Game Boy at some point. And they have the 3DS coming out next year, mm -hmm. and that's going to completely overshadow any kind of gaming device that PlayStation's putting out, that Apple could put out. Mm -hmm. I mean, Nintendo is not trying to break into the mobile market. I think they've made that very clear that they don't want their handhelds to be mobile devices because then you sacrifice gameplay. Right. So I, I was really kind of sad to see that he thinks that, you know, I mean, obviously it would be a, 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 th a threat. I mean, Apple does have threats, but... Um, larger than Sony and Microsoft. That I don't get at all. Yeah, I feel like, well, Nintendo has always been very classy when it comes to competing with Sony and Microsoft, too. You know, I feel like Sony and Microsoft are always going head to head, bashing at each other, and Nintendo's always like, oh, you know what, they had this many in sales, or oh, they beat us for this week. Well, you know what, congratulations to them. We'll be over here creating the next big thing. 
i.e. the 3DS, you right. know? And so that's always been great for them. And yeah, I know what you mean. Like, um, I don't know if I exactly see Apple as a, as a threat, uh, but you know, as, as a, a compromise. Like, you know, Wii is probably something that you play at home with your family. Apple is something that you take on the road with you when you're waiting at the bus stop or at the airport or something like that. Right. So, um, but I guess we'll see. If Apple decides to come out with a console, that's a whole other story. And so, uh, that has yet to happen. So we don't need to worry about that. <laughs> we don't need any more consoles. Three is enough. It's too expensive to keep up I with know. the I know. A big four? Is. I don't know if I can handle a big four. The big no, three is, no, is no. good enough. So. What do you think, Snake? About. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just want to hear you talk a Snake. About Apple maybe putting out a console. Uh, I think they're pretty content with what they have right now. I think right now they're just going to throw a bunch of rumors to throw people off and really not launch anything, maybe within two years. All right. Mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. really looking forward to your video, by the way. Um, <laughs> all right, so that's it for the news. There are there was an, uh, another Nintendo store I just want to briefly touch on, uh, just to mention that they're going to have some of their new or uh, some of their old games available newly on disc. Super oh, Mario, yeah. Super Mario Lost Level, Super Mario Brothers Two, Super Mario Brothers Three, Super Mario All Stars going to be available in disc format mm -hmm. and you get the CD soundtrack and the 32 page book chronicling the history of the franchise. So that's kind of cool that's coming out in December. So that's yeah. what I look forward to. I own um, the first and third game on my Wii Virtual Console. Me too. And Damn it, Nintendo, you know how to reel me in. I would get that just for the book and the soundtrack right. because I'm such a Nintendo fangirl. It's you really hard to find like good on filtered Mario sounds. They just print money. Nintendo just prints <laughs> money. You have my money. I just everything. You saw the slew of toys I had the other day. I just oh my gosh. What are you doing to me? Nintendo. I, know, I'm my I Mario love you. Pumpkin. I know. And Peach. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys, it's that awesome time of the show where we do the chat room shout Three, out. Two, one. Oh, yeah. nice. <laughs> Fantastic. So, ladies and gentlemen who are watching live, if you are on thisweekend.com, jump in our Ustream chat room. That's ustream.tv slash thisweekend. Or if you're on Justin, you can post your questions in the Justin chat room as well. We want to know what you guys are thinking, what you guys want to ask us. Please keep it clean. We had some inappropriate questions last week, which we refused to answer. <laughs> so, let us know while you guys are formulating your questions. It's time for another Yo, Adrian! What? Where is it? Where Nothing? Is it? Nothing? Oh, there it is. <laughs> of course it had to be there. <laughs> okay. So what do you got for us today, Adrian? Uh, for this week, I brought in Vanquish. Because it's a, it's a lightning fast game, and it can be pretty tough, actually. Like uh, um, I died several times. I don't know a lot of players out there have been dying. So what I did is I put together a little strategy video on how to defeat the final boss, which can be a little overwhelming. Uh, so you can take it away. <laughs> Oh, you could just put the volume a little down? Okay, so as you can see, you're fighting two guys at the same time. Now, even though this can be really distracting, focus on one. So I decided to go focus on the red guy first. So you just have to hop into the, uh, the overdrive, and you try to shoot him and try to dodge as much as possible. Don't let them gang up on you, and try to slow-mo as much as you can. So eventually you're going to drain his health like there, and sometimes you'll come in for a really quick melee attack, like it did right there. If that hits you, that's an instant kill. So be careful not to get hit by that. So eventually you will draw them down to a point where they're gonna start a quick time event. Here you press mash square as fast as possible and you'll see this really awesome fighting cutscene here. And if you succeed, you'll launch them in the air and you'll kill them with really stylish moves. And now you'll only have to worry about one. But the cool perk that you get about this one is that as you can see, they improved, they maximized all your boost. So in other words, you can go into overdrive for a longer period of time and it's a little easier to kill the second guy than the first guy. So basically the strategy is the same, dodge everything that he throws at you and go into slow-mo whenever possible. Be careful not to max out and if you do max out, it's best to just move around and dodge a lot. And finally, at the end, as you can see, whenever he's drawn on the ground, you boost up to him and you hit him with a melee attack. Then lastly, once you do all of that, you're going to have a few more quick time events. So be ready for them. You mash square as fast as possible, and then he's going to try to knock you, try to finish you off. So the only thing you got to do here, you know, press left, press right, press up, and then eventually you're going to get to a gun, and then you shoot him two final times, and he'll go down. And with that, you'll be able to defeat the, the final boss in Vanquish. 
Wow. I, I, listen, I tried this game in eighth grade. I love this game. And um, because I haven't been able to put down um, Kirby's Epic Yarn, <laughs> <laughs> I haven't gotten a, a chance to play this, but this is in my game flight queue, and I'm really, really excited to play it. So, But you passed the game, clearly, already. Yes. You're like, yeah, you know, it's what I do. <laughs> For anyone out there who doesn't know, uh, Adrian works at... Mahalo video games department. They do a lot of really awesome walkthroughs. If you guys are having trouble with certain bosses, certain levels, mazes, trying to find achievements, trophies, that kind of thing, they have a great list. Check them out, youtube.com slash Mahalo Video Games. I also host the show Mahalo Video Games today, and we have a new show in the works that's going to be really cool that we're debuting maybe next week, I think. Yeah. So stay tuned for that. And um, now it's time for the, your little treat that you brought for us. Uh, well, this is basically like a little tiny condensed, I guess, teaser of Dinner with the Snakes 2. It's a series that I made where I dress up as Solid Snake and Big Boss and Liquid Snake in the first one. And in the second one, I dress up as Liquid Ocelot and Old Snake. And they just have a sit down at the table and have a nice conversation about what happened in the games. So this is just a tiny um, preview of what's in the video. Kentucky Fried Solids. Also needed to bandage wounds, splint bones, and eat wildlife to get my stamina up. What do you do? Well, I... I, uh... Lay flat on the ground and listen to my iPod. Can you pass the salt snake? This... is my final mission. I, I think that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I mean, all those costumes, I, I would have brought them, but you know, too many changes of wardrobe. And the old snake one actually required to, like, to be an hour in makeup, because if you notice, I have half of my, first is, half of my face is burnt. So I went, did a bunch of stuff to make it look like I'm burnt. And then I did the wig and the mustache and the eye patch. And yeah, it was, it was a very painful costume to be in. <laughs> but it, it welcome to our life. Yeah. yeah. Being painful, painful. and wardrobe. <laughs> <laughs> ah. All right. So for the chat room shout out, did you find a question? Uh, yeah. What is the longest you've played a game in one sitting? And also, why did you choose the costumes that you're wearing? I think those two are good. Let's do both. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Shall we? Who are they from? Uh, they're from Zoo Pants. And Dead Pixel Live. Zoo Pants and Dead Pixel Live. All right, so let's answer our costume one first, shall okay. we? Yes. I am obviously Princess Peach, if you hadn't noticed yet. I have my Yoshi, you can see, on my back. Um, and um, I picked Princess Peach because I knew, I knew that this year I wanted to do something fun and, you know, obviously video games related because I knew we were going to dress up for the show. And I've been a really long time fan of the Mario franchise and she's my favorite character to play in Mario Kart when I can't be Yoshi. Uh, <laughs> and that's why I have Yoshi too because it's Yoshi and Princess. They kind of go together. Yeah. And I'm trying to convince one of my friends to go as Mario so like when we go out people will know mm -hmm. exactly who I am. Because right. it was really funny. I was walking around the offices today and people were like, so who are you? Aww. And I was like, you don't know. <laughs> and I go, the Yoshi is in a dead giveaway? <laughs> and then surprisingly, everyone's like, uh, who's Yoshi? And I was oh. like, oh my God. where are we? Yeah. Video what game dimension time. is this? Video game time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, OK. Well, I picked Chun-Li uh, because I'm Asian. No, 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 no. I'm just joking. Uh, partially because I'm Asian and partially because uh, I always felt like Chun-Li really is one of the most, uh, along with Peach actually, one of the most recognizable video game women out there. And she's, she's badass. And usually if someone says, oh, have you ever played Street Fighter? People are kind of like, uh, what do you mean? And they're like, oh, Chun-Li, you know, the, the girl with the bonbons and the thighs. And they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. And so, um, so yeah, I mean, and I've worn this costume uh, several times, actually, to, to Comic-Cons. And um, I was actually, uh, this, this costume was actually published in a book called Street Fighter, The Complete History. Um, I've gotten to work Capcom's booth in this, um, n any occasion, basically. And when Super Street Fighter 4 came out, everything. And so it's gotten a lot of use out of it. It's gotten a lot of um, uh, recognition, and I'm really happy about it. But it is, uh, you know, it is painful to be in, and so it's not easy to get into this. I would say I would give myself about 
30 to 40 minutes prep time getting into this. The hair takes the longest. Um, you have to tie these up, tie these in, and then put the bonbons on top. And then everything under here, there's pantyhose and a leotard and then <laughs> like having someone zip me up and my cufflings and, and all that stuff. So um, yeah. But it's worth it. It's worth it. It makes people happy. It makes people smile. Um, I, I showed a picture to this one high school kid and he was just like, oh my God, no way. You don't know how happy that makes me that you dress up as Chun-Li, that's so cool. And so, um, yeah, if I can make people happy, that's that's fantastic. Fantastic, so. and Adrian? Oh, uh, well, I, I pick Snake because he's my favorite video game character from my favorite video game series of all time. And I just, I just see myself in Snake. And I think that he's probably the most badass video game character ever created. And it's just, I, I had a lot of fun designing this costume because it's kind of like all just bought up of different parts. These are driving gloves, these are skater things. This is actually from um, military shop in Mexico City. And then stand up a little bit here. Here you can see my military belt yeah. as well. And I got a gun holster as well. Oh, he's got a gun. Keep turning, keep turning, <laughs> keep, keep. Turn around. Keep going. Right. Oh, oh yeah. Keep going. Ow. Keep, oh, oh my God. Oh, right. there, that's what we wanted. Okay. There's a nice shot for you <laughs> girls out there. Uh, thank you, Snake. Uh, no. <laughs> oh, and so to answer the second question, uh, I believe it's from Ted, Dead Pixel Live. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the longest you've ever sat in one sitting and played a video game? Um, for me, it was seven hours was my single city. This mm. is like literally like not getting up for food or anything. Oh. And I don't, I don't want to like embarrass myself, but I was playing Paper Mario. Nice. That's not embarrassing. That's well, fantastic. There, if anyone's, if anyone's played the game, there's this room of a hundred doors or a hundred bosses or a mm. hundred levels. Basically, once you enter it, you can't, there are no save points inside, mm. and if you leave, none of your progress is saved. And you literally, it's like, Mario has to go through and kill, like, anywhere from, like, two to five, like, baddies, and then he has to, by killing the baddies, he gets a key, and then the key unlocks the next door, and then so on and so forth. A hundred oh, wow. doors. Gosh. And there were so many times, the first time I did it, I got to the 98th door, and I died. <gasps> Oh my god, I would have flipped Terrible. out. And I actually, it's funny because I did the math and I was like, if I average like a minute and a half per room, it would take me like two and a half hours to do it or something like that. Wow. So I spent a really long time doing it, until, but, I, but after that I was like, I must pass this. So. And the first hour is just like reading the game, isn't it? Like it's just all reading. I like cutscenes, like kind of yeah, like with the bubbles. Yeah, the stuff. bubbles. It took so long. I never played it because of that. I mean, I played the one on the Wii. I was mm. able to get through it somehow on that one because someone was like, "Oh my god, you have to play it. It's amazing." But that's crazy. Yeah. Um, I think the longest I've ever played uh, is probably around ten hours, and that was Final Fantasy VII. And that's because at the time I was unemployed and um, there was this old place out here in Los Angeles called Arena Lounge. And it was a lounge where people could go in and sit on these amazing sofas that had sub subwoofers in them. And um, I didn't have a video game system at the time and this was sort of my job, like I would do weekend work there. So I would just go in and sit there all night. The boss would let me just sit in there and play for free. So I'm like, okay, I'm unemployed, I'm not doing anything. I'm just gonna sit here and play Final Fantasy VII. And um, it was, that became my job because I think I beat the entire game in probably about five weeks because I was playing around eight to 12 hours every day. And the studio, or the, the place actually had a, a little webcam in there that the audience could control. And um, one of the people who worked there said that when they got there, I was there. And when they left, I was still there. And then they went home before they went to bed checked the webcam and I was still there. <laughs> so. a true gamer. Yeah. So lots and that's... lots of uh, time playing video games. Adrian, what about you? Oh, uh, well, my, the longest time I ever played was when I just got the PS2. My brother and I were really excited and when we bought our first game, but I mean, this was, we were new into the world of memory cards, you know, because back in the old days, everything would save in the cartridge, like Super Nintendo. So then we got the game, but we didn't have a memory card and we weren't gonna be able to go get one until Monday. So then we said, no, to hell with that. I really wanna play the game. So what we would do is put an armored core and play it starting around, I don't know, like 10 in the morning when we wake up and pass it as much as we could and then stop playing at 10 at night because we had to go to sleep. And then the following day, we didn't save anything 
didn't say anything. The following day, we did the exact same thing. So wow. we literally would go through that game every time just because we wanted to play the PS2 so much. And eventually, when we did get the memory card, we passed it incredibly fast. But yeah, that was our story. Of nice. <laughs> See, everyone loves playing games. Mm -hmm. Let us know in the chat room what your guys' longest time sitting and playing a video game was. Because right now, we got to move on to the top five bloodiest <laughs> games. Get over here. <laughs> That's right, it's our Halloween episode, so we thought it only fitting that we do the top five bloodiest games. And I have to give a big thank you to Lon. Lon Harris suggested that we do this, nice. and um, we love him for suggesting hey, this because we said this is a great idea. It is a great so, idea. We're going to go ahead and start with number five. Jessica, please announce. Yes, number five I thought should be Thrill Kill. Uh, now, Thrill Kill's not too widely known. It was actually produced in 1998 for the PlayStation and was actually not released because it was so controversial and um, they just didn't want to release a game that was that bloody and uh, unnecessarily violent. So basically it pits four players against each other and um, this is what you do. You, you hit each other with different limbs. You light people on fire. They have different moves like... Uh, Bitch Slap, Swallow This, and Head Muncher. Um, there's also extreme cases of uh, bondage, sadomasochism, um, uh, different sort of non-PC handicaps. There's, a, there's a, a midget in there who, has, who walks around on stilts so he can be taller. Um, there's a dominatrix who... Um, <laughs> um, She'll, her, her finishing move, she'll basically go down and um, you'll, you'll hear her moaning and then it kind of pans out and you'll just see her tickling the guy's foot. But in the original version, before that was taken out, she was doing some other stuff that um, hmm. they decided was appropriate for the video game. Yeah, but, this um, is one of those infamous banned games. Yes. But it was interesting, though, at the time, back in 98, it was actually a technical feat allowing four players mm -hmm. to fight at once. Now we assume all games should, you should be able to do that, but back then it was really just 1v1, and this way you could have four different people all playing at the same time. So yes. it's kind of cool. And despite it being um, pulled uh, or not released, a lot of people still have it in their homes. Um, I don't know how it leaked, but there are quite a few people who have copies of this game. And what's kind of sad is it all, it all comes full circle. Um, I was, my friend let me borrow Final Fantasy VII and he gave me his memory card. And I didn't know what I was doing. This is the first time I had ever touched the PlayStation. And, um, I erased his memory card, and I was like, you didn't have anything on, important on there, did you? And he was like, oh, just a game called Thrill Kill. So I erased his Thrill Kill. Oh, so, um, bummer. I'm sure you could find it somewhere else, You can but actually still. find it on eBay. If you go to eBay right <laughs> now and type it in, you'll find it right away. So um, if that is number five at our mm -hmm. top five bloodiest games. Adrian, would you please announce number four? Number four is Ninja Gaiden 2. And... Uh, we picked Ninja Gaiden 2 because, I mean, look at that footage. You can dismember people at basically nice. absolutely what? everywhere. And you can chop their heads off, you can slice their hands off. And this looks to be like footage from the PS3 version, I think, because of the purple spurts. <laughs> and, and the Xbox 360 version, it's just blood absolutely everywhere. And what's really cool about Ninja Gaiden 2 in particular is that they gave you these little Wolverine claws. So whenever you use them, you slice them up immediately. Extremely violent. Yeah, no, definitely. Violent. I was watching a lot of, because when I was finding these clips, I was watching a lot of the footage of that, and I was just like, whoa. Some of the <laughs> combo moves you can do in that game are ridiculous. So it was a really a fun, bloody fighting game. All right, at number three is Mad World from the Wii. Now, the Wii has always been toted as not being, uh, of uh, not having hardcore games, but when this game came out, I was just shocked and hot <laughs> about how crazy bloody this game was. Um, you literally, like, the whole point is just to, to kill people, and because it's in this really cool artistic black and white style, and, and it's the, the blood red just really pops on the screen, like, I mean, you, you literally can put trash can over guys' heads and throw them on spikes and chainsaw them. And there's man darts where you throw them on. And then there's the death press <laughs> where you could throw them underneath this spiky thing. And it really kind of utilized the Wii controls in a really kind of creative way, which I thought contributed to the fun of playing this game. 
So, I mean, as you can, I mean, just look at, that oh, great. oh, that was oh, oh, he cuts oh, them, nice. oh, he cut it too soon. That's so cool. Cuts them open. That, um, that game actually kind of came under fire by like a parental group uh, for gamers. They actually got really upset with Nintendo and wrote them a very stern letter saying, I can't believe you would let this sort of game on your family console. And, um... Yeah, there were some people who were really upset about that. But, I mean, um, we'll, I'm sure we'll get to... Well, I don't want to say it now. I can't say it because it's, it's still on our list. So I'll skip that part for later. Yes. Okay. So speaking of the list, on to number two. That's right. It's Mortal Kombat. Whoa. Now, we picked videos from both the new and the old. These are the videos. This is preview footage from the new Mortal Kombat that's coming out next year where they bring back some of the classic fatalities in a really kind of gruesome, brutal way. Mm -hmm. And um, so the 2D gameplay comes back. I mean, Mortal Kombat was really the first game that got the attention of the world for violent video games. Yeah. They kind of like put all these other games on the map. Like people saw that Mortal Kombat was you know, doing all this crazy violent fatality business and they were like, oh, well, I guess that uh, that's, that's what acceptable. they get to do. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, wait, wait awesome. for it. Wait for it. Oh. And that's so cool. Oh, they cut it, it short. Aww. What? <laughs> there was the blood spurting. Oh. Keep it in PG-13. And we actually had a, a, a really cool montage video of a bunch of the old classic fatalities, mm -hmm. but unfortunately, due to a technical difficulty, we won't be able to show it to you. Oh. So that's kind of a bummer. I'm sorry, guys, out there. Um, but you can definitely check them out on YouTube. There's a million and one of them. Mm -hmm. So, And I just remember playing Mortal Kombat and just, like, you know, loving how bloody it was. I could never do the fatalities. I could never do them. What? Is ever. that like a, like a combo problem, or you just didn't I want think, to? Um, I didn't know how to. Oh, uh, okay. I didn't have like any cheat codes or anything like that, and I just uh, couldn't figure them out. And I don't know how other people were doing it. And I was like, "How do they do that? Oh my gosh, it's so cool!" I had like it's... a cheat sheet. Like I had them oh, all written down okay. on like a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. So literally, I'd be playing my sister, and I'd be like, "I'm gonna kill you!" And then I'd like turn to my cheat sheet and just like type in the button combo <laughs> really quick. <laughs> That's great. And she always got so mad. Yeah. I'm like, what? It's all right. Did it's you okay. share the cheat sheet with of her? Of course, I shared it with oh, her. Okay. Sometimes. <laughs> when she was nice. When she made you a sandwich. Yes, exactly. When yes. she would help me out. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to uh, announce our number one? Yes. Number one is Manhunt. Manhunt for the number one bloodiest game. So, um, yeah. Manhunt came under a lot of fire, too, um, because of its... Great, like look at this. You can put paper bags and suffocate uh, people, plastic bags over people and suffocate them. Uh, you know, whoa, what is, what is that? Um, I think it's some kind of um, uh, Are you sledgehammer. Do that on purpose? The reason why we chose this game was because um, for number one, is obviously there's a lot of bloody games out there. What I think is particularly gruesome about this game is that the violence is very real. The mm -hmm. situations are real. These kinds of things could realistically happen. Whereas in a lot of other violent games, they're, they're aliens or they're zombies or they're fake or mm -hmm. you're like in a ninja arena. You know, this is like, this kind of stimulates this kind of psychological horror element. Oh my and, God, that's crazy. You know, extreme violence and... Um, a lot of people thought that this would translate into real life, too. So there was a lot mm -hmm. of controversy around that. People were scared that, you know, playing this game would make it seem like it's okay to go and just ax someone in the face or something like that. So this, this came under heavy scrutiny. As well as Manhunt 2, uh, I know Ugh. 2K had to take things out of the game before it was even released. Like, there was actually uh, a move in there where you could um, put male genitalia in a vice grip and you would use the the Wii Ooh. remote to, to grind it closed. And they really? took they took that <laughs> out. <laughs> they did take that out. <laughs> and so um yeah, I just I found it interesting. And so what my point was earlier was how Mad World came under fire from these uh, parents for being on the Wii when Manhunt 2 was sitting right there, which actually came out before Mad World. So I didn't quite understand what the problem was. Like, it is a family console, yeah, but they don't say it's strictly for families. It's 
it's allowed to have mature rated games on there. The Wii's for everybody, including the hardcore and the people who enjoy, you know, more violent games. So... Indeed. I, yeah. And we're getting some flack from the uh, chat room, which we were expecting. Clearly there is a, a lot of um, uh, hardcore bloody games out there. Um, we have Splatterhouse, Wolverine Origins we consider for the list, Dead Space, mm -hmm. Gears of War, God of God War, of War yes. lots of crazy stuff. So that is our top five bloodiest games. If you guys agree or disagree, let us know. Video games at this weekend.com. Email us with your suggestions for future top fives. We're always looking forward to it. And because we're rapidly running out of time, I need to make sure we get to our bonus points. We haven't done bonus a bonus points point. in a couple of weeks. I know, I'm and excited. I thought Yes, fantastic. I thought what better what better time than Halloween to have some bonus points. While uh, we are getting our, uh, I believe it's uh, Matt that's coming in today. Come yes. on, Matt. Get yes. on in coming here. in to ask us our questions. Get on in here. Um, I want to make sure that you guys know that um, we are starting a new segment in a couple weeks called Ask a Pro. We're going to have a professional gamer on the show. Um, his name is Killer Drew. He's a professional Halo player. Oh, fantastic. So please start sending me your Xbox Live gamer tags if you want to compete against him live on the show in a showdown. He's going to be playing, giving you tips and tricks for multiplayer and all kinds of cool stuff. Galaxy for Gamers is setting that up. We do love Michael over at Galaxy for Gamers, mm -hmm. so look forward to that in the future. And I guess we don't have bonus points. They teased me. Sad. Boo on you. That's okay. We'll save it for next week because we are clearly almost out of time. We ran over last week like mm -hmm. naughty children. So <laughs> um, I do want to just make sure that you guys know that you can follow us on Twitter at TWI Video Games. If you aren't uh, following us on Twitter, please do so. Again, you can email me, Andrea Renee, at andrea at thisweekend.com or find me on YouTube, youtube.com slash blssm01. That is my gamer handle. And where can the fine folks find you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter. Twitter.com slash J E S V. That's Jess V. Mm -hmm. And they can email you now too. Oh yeah. <laughs> I just uh, I just got this. Jessica at thisweekin.com. Please talk to me. I like hearing from you. I really do. And I usually am pretty good at responding. <laughs> and Adrian? So. Colonel, Colonel. I'm in the middle of a show right now. No, really, I can't talk. <laughs> yeah, I know it's similar to small boats over here. No, look, I got uh, look, I'll call you later. All right. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> Uh, you can contact Adrian at adrians at mahalo.com or you can see the rest of Dinner with the Snakes at youtube.com slash Godzilla Rex and be sure to visit the Mahalo page youtube.com slash Mahalo Video Games. Snake out. <laughs> I love that you did the whole show in that accent. Almost the whole show. <laughs> so that is um, going to be it for us here on This Week in Video Games. We want to make sure, again, to say thank you to StormOnDemand.com. Stay tuned. This Week in Music is coming up with Asha K and Tim Bader. They have a really cool show planned for tonight. So stick around for that. But for us, it's game over. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.